All right. Go ahead, sir. Great. We're going to call to order the Facilities and Maintenance Committee uh, February 4th. We are vir meeting virtually in accordance with the governor's executive order. First up is a review of the updated phase three proposal. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Michaels. I uh, provided the work group and then the full board with the updated uh, pre-referendum phase three from Colliers and uh, Malone and McBroom. Um, right now, the estimate for phase three encompasses a total of 60,000 $800. Um, originally, I believe, as I recall, our estimate was in the $65,000 range. So this is a little bit less than what was originally predicted. Um, this particular phase is known as the pre-referendum phase. Um, so for example, Colliers will be doing uh, activities such as due diligence efforts. Uh, they'll be doing some preliminary geotechnical investigations. Uh, they'll be looking at preliminary hazardous materials investigation. And again, with that, we're looking at um, High Crest and Hanmer. Um, that will not be a significant cost because in our plan, we'd be looking at actually abating and demolishing those buildings. So we would not be looking for a lot of uh, remediation there. Oh, well, um, Mike, those would be the other schools mainly? Yeah, those, those would be, be correct. Correct. Okay. Yep. Emerson Williams and um, Webb. Yeah. No, Webb would have been done probably. Yeah. So with regard, uh, the next uh, bullet there, we have educational specifications development uh, at the last facilities and maintenance committee meeting. Um, the committee discussed about bringing in a consultant uh, to assist us with the ed spec um, development. Uh, so that is contained on the budget document, a total of $14,000. Um, Dan Hansen is a retired, uh, actually assistant superintendent that worked for the South Windsor Public Schools. I have had a conversation with him. So um, once this goes before the board and is approved, um, I can have further discussion with him about the process of developing those ed specifications for uh, future use. Uh, again, with regard to Colliers, one of the things they do in phase three is they provide uh, macro schedules and provide timelines. Now, you know, we've been at this for a while now. We've already done an enrollment study. We did a phase one uh, facilities assessment. So. Um, this would be um, sectioning out that timeline over the next couple of years to the point where we get the referendum and then approval before the state of uh, Connecticut. The other piece that Congress will be uh, involved with will be the budget development. Um, obviously, we had some budget information um, originally. Uh, numbers have changed, certainly, at this point in time, so we'll need to update that. In addition to that, within the scope of this phase three work uh, is also uh, updates to the uh, long range enrollment projections by Malone and McBroom. So that's contained within this proposal as well. Um, Malone McBroom has done um, all of the preliminary work before, but this would be updating out. Um, I think we're already into year number three of our 10 year projection. So um, those are the costs involved with phase three. I do wanna let the committee know also um, that I did have the opportunity to meet with um, our state representatives, Carrie Wood and Amy Morin Bello um, to you know, bring them up to speed on where we're at and what our uh, purpose is. Uh, both were supportive of this and um, both spoke uh, to the idea of going forward to the state for approval in the uh, 2022 year was most feasible. So by June 30th of 2022. Um, I've had that conversation with Chuck uh, Warrington for planning purposes. So um, that's where we're at with regard to this particular uh, proposal. So any other questions with regard to that? Mike, qu question here. Um, when you say Carrie and Amy said move forward with the year 2022, um, that I don't know if that's an election year or not, but would you have the referendum before you move forward with that? Or is it after you get this? Thing. Yeah, we'd look to have the referendum before Elaine. Okay. And the other question I saw in this packet, maybe, and I could be crazy, but I did the whole high school renovation from a board seat. And we did that, which sounds like they're wanting to do here is that geo geothermal borings. Am I reading that correctly, Michael, that they're for high crest and for um, Hamner, are they going to do those geothermal bo borings to see if we can is that get heat or some kind of form of heat from that? I can't remember exactly, but we had to eliminate it because of the cost at the high school. Now, 
can you tell me what we're talking about for these two buildings? Uh, just briefly, I don't want to be sure. Technical. Yeah, absolutely. The, <laughs> yeah, with the, before, said, with, the geo, with the geo with the geotechnical um, component, they'd be visiting each site to field mark boring locations. Yeah, I read that. Um, and then they complete uh, a preliminary foundation design analysis. Right. And they pr uh, prepare two engineering reports. Um, right. And what they're looking for is yeah, it's a multitude, the type of soil. Uh, okay. They're looking for, um, you know, if they're. I mean, it's different. It, it, yep. It's different than the geothermal oh, okay. heating system okay. that was supposed okay. to be part of the high original school. high school. That's what this I was is done. Mm -hmm. Right. This is to check to see if there's contaminated soils, what the okay. soil content right. is. Are we going to hit ledge? Are we going, okay. what's the no, clay that's content? Enough. That's enough, Cal. We don't have to go any further. I was just confused by the two. And I knew we were looking okay. at it at the high school. And they sounded the same to me, Mike. So <laughs> I'm going to check what I'm talking about. Yeah, and we did, Elaine, just you, you are correct on that. We actually had a company come out and do a geothermal bore. Yeah. And that was done out uh, in the back of the building. Yes, I actually I shared a, a video clip with the board. Yeah. I can remember filming it. It was done in the old softball field yeah. where we now have the parking lot adjacent to the tennis court. And what that was done for was to um, look for soil depth ledge uh, because that was the area they were going to be drilling. I want to say, Sally, you might remember three or 400 wells as part of geothermal. Yes. Yes. Yep. Yes, and you are that's what I thought we were got... talking about, Mike. Right. See, that's why I just wanted clarification. Yep. Yeah, that got value engineered out, so we did not end up doing that. So. Okay. All right. No problem. And Mike, I have just one, one comment. You were almost right on. It was 60,800, and we had projected 50 to 75,000. That's what it was? Okay. You're really good. Thank um, you. Number two, and it's because we just talked about geothermal, but I had been wanting to bring this up forever, is that we are going to look into alternate energies. Um, because especially now with oil and gas, I mean, we could probably buy an oil company. They're so cheap right now, but they're just um, working now on solar and wind. And um, I'm sure the state would be pushing us to go in that direction. So Sally, would you, that's, I, thanks for bringing that point up. I mean, our high school with the original design, you were looking at geothermal. I mean, you think right. back to all of the photovoltaic that was up on the roofs that yeah. had to be scaled back because of value engineering. Sally, right. would it be your assertion, given the fact that we're looking at the potential of um, doing two build new, that it would be more feasible to design from the beginning some of this alternative energy like geothermal yeah. and photovoltaic. It's always it's always less expensive and better to design it from the beginning. Um, again, you know, you you kind of cost things out as far as um, you know the availability of natural gas, the availability of you know, where are you going to put the solar? Are you going to put it on your roof or, you know, those kinds of things. And then are you adding structural? It also will depend on what the, the specs are for, and we have to delve into, you know, are we, are they still pushing the high efficiency buildings? Um, and one of the downsides to the high efficiency buildings, at least we found in the renovate is new, is that every boiler is a boutique boiler <laughs> because it had to fit a specific, you know, a specification of high efficiency. So, you know, I think that right now, again, just as we did the high school where we didn't go for the LEED certification, but we built to that standard. I think those standards are right now the norm. And we would absolutely look to see if there's any type of credits. We'd work with Eversource. You know, you work with all of their Malone McBroom or whoever is doing all of the other things. You know, would bring in the consultants. You know, certainly, and um, you know, work it work it that way so that anything that would take us off the grid is better. Okay. You know, without without yeah. a doubt. You know, you want your well, meter to go in the other direction. I just remember at the high school, Mike, as we went along through phases of actual building and we were in there with our hard hats on, Michael, we had cuts we had to make as we went along. Yes. You know, just, you know, I, it's not 
we're nowhere near that step right now, but uh, right. it's certainly a budget we have to stick around or stay. Around. Remember the cuts, and and as you might remember, the cuts came because of the whole PCB issue, which was all right. a part of the renovate right. as new, especially right. in the two buildings that you're talking about. When you're building new buildings, then you're literally at a blank slate, right? And there's lots of new building, school building construction materials from different towns out there. Yeah, I saw see, that. You know, whether it's Newtown or wherever, who, you know, Newtown built the new Sandy Hook school. I saw that picture. Um, you know, mm -hmm. that, that will be able to reap the benefits of their, uh, of, you know, what they were able to learn. Yeah, those safer buildings were nice too. But no, it's just a process, Michael. I was curious because we, we will be faced with, um, we needed 10 more million than we had proved and we got 10 million from our legislature. So, and Amy and Carrie, I asked on the forum the other night, do they see funds available for schools? And they did say, yes, they do see funds available for schools. So it was in the paper too. They had thanks, Bob. Yeah, and I, I think um, the, the methodical way we're going about this, when we get to the point where we go to the state and we request the, the funding, you know, we've got a, an enrollment plan in place, we'll have ed specs in place, we'll have yeah. a clear building plan in place. You know, we're not trying to be extravagant here, but what we're trying to do is replace our aging infrastructure. Obviously now, if you look at heating and ventilation systems, I mean, now now is the time. Now is mm -hmm. definitely the time. So. And I think, you know, the one thing to say about the high school um, program as well, it's like every piece that we did in that building, you know, you went to demolish a wall and you found a wall within a yes. wall that you didn't know about. So a <laughs> right. um, lot, of, lot of surprises with that. So, you know, Boilers in this particular build, and right. and stairways. <laughs> yeah. so with this particular build, building new, basically what you're looking at is you're doing your, your you know, geotechnical um, borings. You're looking at what the soil looks like looking whether or not you have thank ledge you. and all of those those pieces. So thanks for the question, Elaine. Uh, I have a, uh, just one more comment since we're on all this. We had did not select, but we had narrowed down the scenarios for modernizing four schools. Are we still within that? Like Highcrest would be the safety school. There would be a new heat, Highcrest and Hamner, and then it would be uh, renovation for Emerson and Webb. Are we still on that plan? Yes, Bobby, we're, we're looking at that as the basis of our plan. So it would be build two new, it would be renovate two, and then ultimately take one offline. Um, as you can recall, historically, uh, we did a test fit in the Charles Wright space, and there is really literally no land available to be able to provide that. So. We'd, we'd build new and renovate new to be able to also encompass a, a broad redistricting plan that we phase in. Uh, and again, the work that Malone and McBroom has done is talked about phasing that where students, when they move, would only move once. Mm -hmm. One movement. So you would not have kids being upset and moved from school to school for, you know, this year they're at this school, then they're moving over to this school. So, but the board will have more work to do with regard to actually honing in on the specific plan and what what is the most feasible. But um, from what I recall the work group doing, um, it was really looking at that build two new, renovate two, and take one offline. Okay, I'm glad we're getting this back on track. I any am. Other, any other questions with regard to that? Uh, my intent this evening, if um, everyone is okay with this, would be to bring this before the board on Tuesday, um, requesting approval to move forward um, with the phase three uh, pre-referendum phase. Um, again, from the funding source, uh, we'd be looking to go before council uh, to utilize the 2% reserve funds, which uh, currently, I believe at this point in time, uh, has approximately $160,000 in that account. That account is a council controlled account uh, that takes in funds that we return that we have not spent uh, in our operating budget and uh, is able to be used for capital projects. Good. My, my comment, should you say, was probably in there? Uh, off the top of my head, Elaine, I believe it's yeah. about 100, 160,000. Okay. I believe from I last week. I won't hold you to that, like my checkbook. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay. Yep, I'm in favor of it, Mike. Yep, I'm, I'm excited that we're moving along. I know we had to stop for a serious reason, but I'm glad we've got it up and running again. Okay. I'm glad there's people on here that are know what's gone from the background, like Bobby. She's been on the whole font time. That can be confusing to new people. <laughs> Well, I, I went to my folder, and to be perfectly I honest, bet, when Chuck was there, he was doing um, math on the chalk, uh, the chalkboard, whiteboard, um, to get us to understand some of the things. It is a complicated yeah. project. Yeah. yeah, they're going to need somebody on this committee that stays just like you did, Bobby, from beginning to end. And Mike, are we going to, we're not going to necessarily have a building committee, are we? Council will Remember we, absolutely remember we had a high school thing. building committee? Are we trying to get one again? Well, here's the challenge with that right now. The building committee that uh, worked on Weathersfield High School was also charged with the renovation. Right. Remember that. Uh, and I mean, this goes back to, I want to say 2008, 2009. <laughs> At time least, period. 2010, it was that way. Correct. Yeah. So what ended up happening was the history there was that the uh, economy turned sour and right. the project went on the shelf. Then in 2010, it came back off the shelf and they decided to focus solely on Weathersfield High School. So right. hammer renovation didn't happen. Right. So the building committee, correct me if I'm wrong, Sally Katz, but the building committee is appointed by the town council, correct? Yes. All right. And in order to disband the old committee, it has to be done by council, um, council vote. And then the establishment of a new committee. So we should assume, we should assume the old committee is still active on those, but it was oh, only technically the technically the old committee is still on the books and active. Okay, thank you. Yep. So no do problem. we have to put in the request to have that committee dissolved to the town council? I'm just you know. I think that might be, and I don't want to jump in, but I think that might be a conversation between Chuck Carey and Mike Rell. Okay. Correct. But, but Sally, can we move forward anyway? I mean, Mike, we can move forward with phase three. We don't need a building committee as established and stamped a building committee, don't we? We can go ahead with phase three. We can move forward with phase yes, three. I don't want any more stalls. Once, yeah, once we get into the to the nuts and bolts where we're getting into architecture and we're getting to the point where a referendum is coming, building committee is definitely going to need to happen. Okay. Thank you very much, Sally and Mike. Thank you. Lou, are you also in agreement with yes. moving this forward to the board? Thank you, sir. All yeah. right. All right. I'll bring it before the board on Tuesday. All right. Did we have an update on facilities or is that? We do, that's why we have the fabled Sally Katz with us uh, <laughs> this whole time, just to provide an update um, as we get ready to welcome back our uh, pre-K through yeah. three students on Monday. Go ahead, Sally. Yeah, right now, as far as um, the way the rooms are set up, we think we're pretty well set for students returning K through three. Um, you know, we'll be there in case teachers need to modify and move things around. Um, and, you know, there's cleaning supplies and there's, you know, we've been, we've been keeping up with, with cleaning the building. We've been opening, um, you know, opening and closing the louvers for the maximum ventilation in the buildings. We've had a couple of glitches at um, Charles Wright, um, you know, over the past few weeks when it's gotten very cold, but thankfully the staff has been able to react quickly. We've gotten some space heaters in the affected rooms and we're able to, you know, to deal with that. Um, right now over at Hanmer with the boilers, I have an engineer um, working up a new design plan to put that out to bid, um, knowing that the boilers are 57 years old, I think it is, that we discussed. Um, and so far, uh, the repair that we did on one of the boilers, knock on wood, has been holding. Um, other than that, our staff has been in the buildings, you know, continuously doing maintenance and dealing with problems that pop up here and there. But, you know, overall, 
um, I'm happy to say, as I said, knock on wood, we are basically normal. And I think we're just really hoping and waiting for the kids to come back in earnest and uh, we're ready for them. And again, you know, I think that we keep getting better and better as far as cleaning goes for, especially with COVID. Um, and the kids have been great. The teachers have been great, you know, as far as masking and everything else like that. And so, you know, we'll see. I think with each day that more vaccine becomes available, that things will also, you know, just get better from even from a facilities standpoint, people will feel more comfortable being in the facilities. Um, but again, we're, we're in good shape. You know, if I could just say so, the, the CDC director, the new one was on last night, she was being interviewed and she said to open the schools that they're safe yes. places. And she also um, talked about the concern of teachers being vaccinated before schools open. And um, she said, you know, it, it, it probably won't happen simultaneously, but um, it's also not enough, it's, it's not a worry. Teachers are not getting COVID in the schools. But I will say that, I mean, and, and Mr. Emmett and I pound on Charles Brown every, <laughs> every week when are we going to get vaccinated when are you know our groups are in 1b when are when is 1b3 or wherever we're going to be open to where we can get our frontline teachers and our frontline staff vaccinated and you know it's like everything else it's it's patience yeah i think um, the teachers would feel much better if they could get yes. vaccinated though but it's still it's a long process but i will say that the the precautions that we've put in place as far as the couple of times we've needed to use isolation rooms and other things like that. And certainly hats, hats off to Clo, who's done the contact tracing. I will, in full disclosure, my custodial manager is out with COVID. Um, and so, wow. you know, we've been able to keep our numbers of staff members who have been affected low but um, when a when a staff when it has turned positive, clothes been right on it. We've been able to clean any area, you know, without question. So I think from a facility standpoint, we're doing pretty well. Good. Yeah, I, I would definitely echo that, Sally. I mean, I think that uh, the other thing that's been really helpful is the fact that we're not opening the buildings to outside yes. groups at night. Mm -hmm. So. You know, you've got the second shift of custodians coming in and they've got full unfettered access to the building. They can run the Clorox machine. They can get into classrooms, uh, you know, and we still obviously are maintaining the Wednesday as a full remote day at this point in time, again, to offer up, you know, additional opportunities to clean. And obviously, once we get more vaccine, I, as I've said, I would really like to be able to run a clinic for our staff um, over at Weathersfield High School. We have the logistical capability to do it. We've just got to get the vaccine and the okay to um, get frontline workers like our teachers uh, and support staff um, uploaded into the VAM system. Yep. Um, but you know, I think Sal, you had said it before and Bobby, you had said it right now, it is just availability of vaccine. Mm -hmm. And with our uh, staff members, 75 and older, you know, we've had most get at least the first dose and we've got a couple that are struggling with appointments to get the second dose. So right now, availability is definitely an issue. Um, we do understand, uh, Sally talked about um, meeting with Charles Brown. Um, we're hopeful that by mid-February, those age 65 to 74 will be able to get vaccinated. And at that point in time, we'll upload them into the VAM system. So, um, you know, from a, a building standpoint, I think, you know, our buildings have been kept clean. Um, we're not seeing spread. Our evidence tells us we're not. And the other good thing, folks, I don't know if you've seen the positivity rate is heading downward. I know, it's great. And uh, I did get confirmation today. I mentioned it at the previous board meeting about you know the positivity rate, the 14 day rolling average. We did get confirmation from Charles today that um, we had 400 extra positive cases that related right back to the Department of Corrections, not Weathersfield at all. Can you tell me where's this Department of Corrections? They said it was on Wolcott Hill Road. It is on, it's, yeah, it's on Wolcott Hill Road as you're going north towards Hartford, right past Jordan Lane. 
So it's the old Department of Labor building. Yeah, it's a bus stop there, Bobby. The old yeah, bus stop. I, I know. I, I just well, didn't... Years ago, we'd put the token in the bus and go. <laughs> it, skewed, it, it, it skewed the numbers. Okay. Yeah, so our rate, you know, where we, at one point in time, I think we were up at 103. Um, what was it today, Sally? 50, like 53 yeah. or yeah, something? It was, it was much, much, much lower. Much so we're, we're, we're seeing the numbers go down, um, which, which is good. I think it's a favorable time to get the kids back in. Um, I also want to um, offer up my appreciation to Sally. I know uh, talking with principals and teachers yesterday at uh, the reopening committee meeting, we're talking about um, areas where there's snow to get those cleared off for mass breaks. Um, I had a meeting with the Weathersfield Federation of Teachers this afternoon, and we received accolades. I know over at Webb, um, we've been able to create space there for kids to be able to get out for recess and for mass breaks. So yeah, it's much we appreciated. The, and we cleared the Hammer um, courtyard for the first time. That was- Oh, yeah, it has to be the was, first time. <laughs> it was a, well, it was requested for the first time today. Yeah, um, be a great and, start. And mm -hmm. certainly um, Alan Schiff and the grounds crew as soon as we're told, hey, you know, kids are still going outside for mask breaks, let us know the areas and we're working with, with uh, the principals on that. We'll Marvelous. Done that there's snow, we'll get them cleared. Marvelous. And hey, Mike, I have a question on numbers you just mentioned. Um, how do the numbers look coming back? Can you send us any details on that in Friday update or not? No, yeah, ready. I mean, actually, I'll be visiting schools tomorrow, Elaine, because I want to do one more walkthrough and make yeah. sure everybody has what they need and then just oh, get wonderful. a visual on the buildings. So mm -hmm. I will ask when I visit with principals tomorrow to see if they have that updated um, data. That'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm just wondering what the largest number in one class will be, <laughs> you know, and who's going to have only four kids, you know, because the parents chose remote. Right. Here's some here's some good news. I just got a news push that Johnson and Johnson is going after emergency authorization for their one vaccine, and they already have a hundred million doses ready oh, to be marvelous. shipped out. Yeah, I'll so. put my arm out. I'm telling you, right? <laughs> I'll have my arm out the other window. We'll go together like an airplane. <laughs> you know, one of my concerns has been all of, well, a thousand concerns during all this, and the fact that we've you know, done this well, even though we get enough letters to say we didn't, um, is the size of classrooms, the discrepancy. Now, I, I was fortunate enough to teach at Highcrest and Charles Wright. They both have small classrooms. Then you go to Hamner, and Hamner has like the Ponderosa in the fifth grade. You know, you yep. get this huge area of space. Um, I'm hoping we're thinking of that as we put 20 kids into a classroom that's small. Um, yeah, and I think, you know, that's a good point. And it goes back to the whole process of mitigation strategies and, you know, continuing to um, uh, distance kids to the extent that we can, obviously. The masks are critically important, um, as well as the hand hygiene. And I think, you know, we've done exceptionally well up to this point in time, but, you know, we're going to have to monitor. And, you know, I'll be sending out communication tomorrow. Um, to families, just, you know, giving them the, the heads up, um, you know, asking them not to go and participate in Super Bowl parties and go out. Yeah, well, we You're right. talk about where it's, where it's happening, things like that. But also, you know, just reminding mask compliance. Um, we delivered pediatric masks uh, out to all buildings today. So, you know, for those kids that have those masks where it, it falls down or um, it mask breaks, we have extras ready to go. We have cloth masks, both uh, student and adult. Uh, they are out in the buildings now. And I know Mike Baerbalt was delivering uh, the KN95 masks today. So I think we're ready with PPE. Uh, we're bringing in more cleaning supplies. Um, I'm also gonna have Charles go out to the buildings with me next week to have a look and assess. So Bobby, to your point with number of students and classes, we'll be taking a look at that. Okay, I was, just, I was just worried about size and having six feet between children seems impossible at times up at Highcrest or Charles Wright. Um, that's what frightens me, you know, because now, well, now we have kids standing still or sitting still all day and they just don't do that well. Yep. And that's when Charles Brand tells you, what's, what's his quote, Mike? 
the don't let the perfect get in the way of the don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good right so he knows that we're not going to be able to get six feet oh okay every classroom for example but, but that we'll do the best that we can and that along and in tandem with mask wearing and, and hand hygiene that that's real. Is my is the plan still um, lunches in classrooms? No, the plan is uh, students moving to the cafeterias for lunch. Okay. I, I do believe, and we have um, purchased folding tables because our old typical tables, like you know, Lou, you'd know at Hanmer, we had those tables where the kids would face each other. That is an absolute no no, and that we can't right. do. So it, it was on my it was on my list. I because. Um, we got a picture of the calf yep. and these new tables, they're like one-sided tables and. Yep. And what those tables do, we got those through our cafeteria fund. Um, those tables, I actually had seen those over at Charles Wright. Those tables are convertible. So you can actually put the top down and then create a, uh, a seat. So when you think about Hanmer school and the kids all having to come in and sit down on the floor for a performance, We'll be able to utilize those tables and actually uh, transform them into seats so the kids can sit on seats as opposed to sitting on the floor. So, Mike, can you send us a picture and Friday update? Yeah, I think I sent one before. I will absolutely send you one well, again. Maybe I'll, I'll be see. out. I'll be out. And, Michael, we have money, according to Amy Bello, we got 1214000 for COVID. So, if you need tables like that, can you use that fund? Yeah, you'll get in the Friday update tomorrow, Elaine, a, uh, and the allocation that we got as well as the rules. Um, so oh, this, okay. <laughs> yeah, so this is funding that's available to, um, it's going out to all LEAs. And uh, this is called ESSER. It's the uh, Elementary and Secondary School uh, Emergency Relief Fund. Yeah, that's, it's called Corona's Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriations. That's Absolutely correct. So that, that funding can be used for all things COVID related from oh, uh, you know, physical services so have some, components, yes. um, certainly the potential of summer school. Uh, we can, there, there's a lot. And obviously yeah. for us, focus on the needs of the kids. Yes. Help get people Absolutely. Put back Thank on. you. So. That's COVID relief plan has already been passed and the money's been sent out. This is right. not this COVID relief plan that is, you know, we're waiting forever for it to be brought before Congress. That has no- Oh, that one has no difference. No, this is a- No, this, this one- under Weathersfield, it says- Correct, it this, this funding has already been allocated. It's gone to the state. Um, the state gets, uh, by law, can have a 10% hold back. And then they've allocated this money out to each um, local education agency. Um, they utilize Title I funding um, allocations. They use that as the source. Originally, they ended up coming up with the wrong fiscal year. So the uh, allocation was incorrect. So last Friday, late afternoon, they sent out the uh, updated allocation. So um, we definitely have the ability to utilize those funds. They do not expire. We do have time to use them. So it's not all at once. Um, I've sent the allocation out along with the rules to the um, principals and the uh, leadership teams to start talking about the process of how will we utilize Wonderful. funds to support our students and support our schools. So I understand that the uh, uh, application, the grant application will open up uh, the week of February 22nd. So that's the latest on that. So that will be another potential funding source. And what we understood from the state is that it is a supplement, not supplant, meaning it's supplemental funding. We should not be utilizing it to reduce our budget. Oh, okay. According to the state. But you know, Mike, there's a lot of things you could use it for for COVID. If you have to have them, if you have too many kids in a class, maybe you gotta buy that plastic stuff between kids. You don't know yet, Mike. There's so many unknowns yet till you bring them back. Correct. You, know, you Correct. have this. It's like my husband, you have this fund that you're ready with. <laughs> then we never use it. <laughs> Good thing his checkbook is not mine, Bobby. <laughs> I never have that problem. <laughs> um, I, it, it, this, this is great. I mean, I, I'm so pleased that money's coming to the states and to the towns for education. Um, you know, that's the, the best thing we could ask for right now. Good. Yep. 
Yeah, and and knowing that it's not as restrictive as previous funds, um, you know, so we can utilize it for again for kids, for buildings, for supports to get these kids back and and to help get them caught up. I mean, many of these kids have lost a lot. So oh yeah, that's why I did mention summer school, and so that's still in your head that we could absolutely, possibly... absolutely, okay. absolutely. And again, we'll need from a, a, a facility standpoint, we're gonna have the conversation um, not only with Sally, but with Kathy Bagley, because usually during the summer, we utilize the buildings for park and rec programs. Right now, we don't know what they're gonna look like, but um, we are gonna have to be strategic in terms of which buildings we use. There are some that aren't air conditioned that really aren't conducive to a, a summer school program, and then others that fit perfectly. And we know that we're going to be utilizing web again for our um, extended uh, uh, extended year summer school for our students with special needs. Lane, I'm not able to share my screen, but I will. I found the picture of the calf, so I will email it out to you. Thank you, Lou. Thanks, Lou. I, Thank you. I probably just read too much and missed the picture. <laughs> no, I, I found it in our from Patrick Cohn's email. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know if it was in. Okay. Thank you, Lou. Yeah. Very kind. Well, this, you know, for the first time in a long time, I felt positive about the position we're in. I'm talking about the country as a whole, school systems, our school system, and that, we, you know, they kept, we said, they kept saying, we're turning the corner, we're turning the corner. I think we finally are peeking around the corner. Um, at least I feel it. Yeah, I would say so too. And again, you know, from a facilities and maintenance perspective, we had all kinds of questions about ventilation. The ventilation has not been an issue, with the exception of a couple of uh, difficult heating units over at Charles Wright. It's actually knock on wood. It has really been. Uh, it, it's overall worked, we're doing well. Worked so. Hopefully that continues. So, <laughs> Sally, anything else from the facilities and maintenance side? Nope. Nope. Thanks. Any other questions, folks? No. Any other business? I have none this evening. No. Great. Then we will adjourn and see everybody on Tuesday, and we will have that motion for the full board. Good. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you, Lou. Thank you, Mike. Everybody. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. Yeah. Okay, we're adjourned. Thank you.